I was doing more gym, I reckon, than I normally would. But I found when I was racing on the on the climbs and stuff, I just didn't feel fatigued. Yeah. In, in terms of your training for your um, ultras, what does a typical training week look like for you? And maybe also, how has that evolved over time as well from when you first started? For that first yeah. uh, two and a half gate run to Mecca's. <laughs> yeah, I suppose at, at the time I, I didn't really know what I was doing. So a um, couple of mistakes I was making was um, definitely the nutrition side of things, definitely the amount of, of running I was doing. I remember, for example, for one of my my first 100K race, I thought it was a smart idea to run 70Ks like on a training run. Hell so yeah. and I got through fine, but... The, if fast forward to now, I'm still doing my long runs, but they just there's no they're nowhere near the distance or time. So um, my typical week these days would be probably a lot like a lot of other athletes. I generally run five five days would be probably minimum now, but I'll, I before Tassie I was doing for the first time actually I was running seven days, but um, for the the two easy days that I would normally have a rest day, um, I was doing easy runs with my dog. So, oh, yeah. yeah, so she she needs a run every day. So <laughs> I'll go and do like maybe a 3K really easy easy run, 3 to 5K on those two days. And I do, I do two sessions. So I do out of those five days, I do two easy, two, two sessions and one long run. So those two sessions would either be, um, or they would be, a flattish tempo interval style um, session, and the other session day, which they would they wouldn't be together unless I've stuffed up um, something <laughs> with 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 everything else that's going on. I think I did it once actually. Um, would be a hill day, so generally the same sort of structure um, as in intervals, but they all depend on what. Uh, event I was training for yeah and is, yeah. is that quite a key difference between say just training for a marathon and training for trail running is that you need to get the hills in there as well because yeah. that wouldn't be typical of someone who's just wanting to run a marathon but you kind of need that strength right in order yeah. to pull yourself up the hill and be able to control your way down too yeah yeah definitely um some of the you wouldn't be doing this in a marath marathon uh, training but <laughs> Say um, I was um, training for a 100K race, which um, I generally do maybe at least one a, one a year. Um, I would be doing hills and the hills would be with added hiking because during the race it is going to be quite, you generally would have probably half, when I say half, if it's a 100K, usually 5,000 metres of um, climbing, which is quite a bit. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, so instead of having like a runnable hill that you might do some strides on for a marathon, might be a 30-second, one-minute or two-minute uphills to get that strength, mine would, would start off as a runnable hill and then as my weeks progress, it would change into alternating between running, finding a flatter spot, then hiking the steeper parts and then running again. So it might be instead of doing those 30-second, two-minute intervals, it, it would generally go like five to 10 to 12 minute of for one rep for each for each climbing distance yeah. um, and they'd be hiking. And then, you know, like you might add some weight, you might start wearing a, your, your pack, your race kit closer to say if you're four weeks out, your biggest load, you might um, loading week, have your mandatory gear on that you're going to wear on race day. So, you know, this is how it's going to feel. You know, you get used to it before rather than rocking up to a race and then putting it on and thinking, wow, this feels a bit heavy. This is heavy, yeah. How, how, heavy would it, how heavy would the weight of your pack and your gear typically uh, be on the day? Because you'd try and be I as think, light as possible, right? Yeah, there's, there's mandatory gear generally mm -hmm. for, for weather-wise and um, safety. Yeah. Um, I think the heaviest pack I've had was pro – I'd probably do it a bit differently now, but I think it was maybe maybe seven, eight kilos. Um, that was for um, a race. You should look it up. It's called uh, Down Under. If you haven't oh, yeah. heard, of it. no, I haven't um, heard of that one. <laughs> it's it's basically. Um, have you heard of the Barkley Marathons? 
Yeah, yeah, man. Oh, I've watched so many YouTube videos yeah. on that. It's... it's kind of it's kind of like that with yeah. the rate. So yeah. you have to qualify, um, and um, generally, I think the best year they've had five finishes. I think that's oh. their best year, and it's tight because of the terrain and it's tight because of cutoffs, and yeah, it really depends on weather. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool. All right, and now. Yeah. After covering a bit of your training, what does the uh, nutrition component of your uh, training and nutrition look like? Is it just an assumption that I assume that you eat really nice meals because you're a chef or is that not right? <laughs> well, I do at work. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I eat quite honest. Yeah. Hopefully the owner of the hotel doesn't see this, but I'm, every, every time he comes in, I'm probably eating anyway. Yeah. But, um, yeah, because I train a lot, I do, I, and I generally eat a lot anyway. So it could be anything during the day, like when I'm working outside training. So I, my training would generally be in the afternoon um, or or morning. So um, when I'm training, I don't really have anything apart from water. And then on my long runs, um, I will I will start adding in some protein. I'll, I'll have some like a, a bar, or I'll have um, some cut up fruit um, along the way. I don't. I stay away from um, uh, gels unless yeah. I'm racing. I do use them when I'm when, when I'm racing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I keep it kind of simple. But but, but I've done. Um, I know what my. I'm, I'm pretty lucky. I suppose some people are very unlucky with what they can have when they're when they're running and when they're racing. They can get upset st- stomachs and stuff like that. I haven't really had anything like that, so I suppose I'm I'm lucky. But um, when I do race, compared to keeping it quite simple, I um I have a quite a automatic routine now that I don't really have to think about. But I generally have I make sandwiches because generally it's gonna it's gonna be a ten plus hour race. It could be plus twenty hour. So I like to have solid food. So that'll be a mixture of uh, bars or um, dates that are covered with coconut. Um, nice. It'll be cut up fruit always. So I'll have a mixture of apple, strawberries, raspberries, oranges, uh, just basically all portioned out. And I'll have them at aid stations as well because I find that sort of natural sort of um, sugar to be quite good and even in, in my stomach. And, yeah, I'll have um, some gels here and there and basically just top up with electrolytes and water as I go along. And then when I get to aid stations, I just, I can, I basically just have whatever. I might, yeah. whatever I'm feeling like, you know, some chips or uh, chocolate or with these bigger races, they might have, you know, I remember having some wood-fired pizzas and some noodles. and <laughs> nice. <laughs> and, uh, some, some of the races are amazing, like amazing, like yeah. aid stations. Yeah, I guess I'm lucky because I can have um, anything um, during a race. Yeah, it's so dependent on the individual, right? Like I've talked to quite a few endurance athletes now, and there's such a range from people who only have liquid the whole race yeah. to people like you mm-hmm. who's kind of like anything kind of goes within reason. It seems like you, you, you almost got to test it out and see what works for you, like trial and error almost. Yeah. Definitely. I think the faster you go, or the shorter the shorter the distance or race that you're doing um, is, you know, you, you need less of that whole food. You know, it might be liquid base, it might be just gels, it might be just, you know, water and electrolytes, you can get it done. But with these longer distance, main, mainly uh, I, I have to eat like, you know, more whole foods and long burning sort of carbs sort of stuff so I can be sustained during those long periods on, on your feet. So, mm. yeah. I just thought actually in terms of your going back to your training, do you do um, any kind of weight or any type of resistance training as strengthening for your running as well? Or is it just running that you do? Uh, I, I, go, I get to the gym probably three times a week. Oh, yeah. I'll have a training block for, for strength and conditioning as well. Yeah. Uh, but the last race um, that I trained for, the Golden Trail Series at Kanani, I said I was running seven days a week and I was, but I probably jammed in seven weeks of training for a race and usually I would like to have about three three months. So I was doing more gym, I reckon, than I normally would. But I found when I was racing um, on, the, on the climbs and stuff, I just didn't feel like fatigued. So, I mean, it's so 
it's just concreted in my mind how much and I've been doing strength conditioning for probably at least three years now mm-hmm. and adding that to my adding that to my running it, it's it's you it, it's I would not be training for a race without doing gym work now so the transfer nope. is so tangible oh especially with the with the hiking and the strength and all that all the you know small little twitch muscles that you use you know um you know if you're balancing or you're doing all your one-legged you know rdls and all that sort of stuff and um yeah oh, it just helps and you can feel it like when you're stepping up on 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 a on a climb or undulating sort of terrain you know all your different without without um gym work um i don't think well, I know now that I would never, I probably wouldn't be as strong. I'd probably start finding maybe my my pace getting a bit slower or not being able to sort of perform in that top end mm. um, and probably might even overcompensate with the running side of things. So if anything that's come out with that for the last three years and, you know, it did take a, an injury like three years ago to, to find out, you know, I've got to start doing strength, which I suppose a lot of people do. Yeah. Um, yeah, I probably wouldn't. I wouldn't be um, as strong, or I'd be probably stress stressing trying to find the time to do more running to to think. You know, I've got to have this, um, you know, volume rather than knowing that if I go to the gym, I can drop a day of running really and still get fatigued and stronger. 